Hey y'all, wanna see some of the stuff I got for my birthday this year? Stay tuned and watch this, my 50th video on my vlog station. This is gonna be up just a few days after my one year anniversary uploading here to this station and it's around and about my birthday too so i decided let's get nostalgic my first video was a birthday haul and that was way cool and meant the world to me so this year my 50th video is another birthday haul that means the world to me this is reopening my artistic side so stick around and let me show you what i got this is the Blick Noir Plain Air Easel by Julian. So quick overview, I've got it sitting here like a table easel because I don't have a lot of space to set it up and filming it set up would have been even worse. Let's get in here. Start by unlatching these, two latches on the back. This easel is definitely my number one big lifetime dream come true gift from this year. Uh, this year was very special. I got to choose all my own gifts, so I got to get stuff that really means amazing things to me. All of these I already had. Sketchbook, watercolor pad, another sketch pad, black paper. They all fit in the back on top of this, the included palette that covers this drawer. So if we get in here from the back, and I think this is how I'm gonna show it because then I can just show absolutely everything. It's gonna be totally weird. <laughs> so what I wanna show first, <laughs> it's very weird getting in here backward, but this is gonna be the easiest way for me to film it. Things that I already had, everything in this drawer, oil paints, watercolors, that's one where the bottle is a nightmare, so I wrapped it up. This was a birthday purchase. This is my first ever pink watercolor. I've been wanting this since I was a little kid and I first messed with watercolors and I thought, now how am I supposed to use red watercolor, those little dried watercolors inside of the plastic case? And I'm thinking, how am I supposed to go from the red one to the white one in order to make pink without completely messing the white up? I thought, of all the colors in the universe you need to have, you need pink and this, uh, for my 30th birthday is the first time I've ever had pink watercolor, so yay. These are our alcohol pearl inks, and I got these because I'm always needing something that you can use to paint a surface like metal, and I was looking at some crafting actually on YouTube to customize a watercolor case when I started getting back into painting just recently, and I'm not sure if I'm gonna do it or if I'm gonna do it with this. I have another video up where I reviewed a watercolor insert and I'm really liking that, and I keep that inside of an Altoids tin. You can see back there, I really like that tin too, so I don't know if I'm gonna decorate it anymore, but I've got ideas and I'm going to be filling up more tins with paint, so I might use these soon, but I've always wanted to try all these different mediums, so this is just another one I wanted to try. I am super excited about these things. They're the rebirth of my artistic personality. Here's a little glimpse of what I did with that watercolor insert that I bought, and maybe I'll go into that more later. Just the basic set of 12 that I bought at some point. So that's why I'm expanding with the pink. And I have a place to keep all of my brushes right next to the stuff I really need them for. I revamped and pared down a little while back, so I don't have a whole lot of brushes. I kind of have the minimum of what I need to test out and figure out what I really need and carry with me. This is a little case I jerry-rigged to hold my Tachikawa comic nib holder and my three new nibs, new stuff that I've been playing with recently. Now on to more of the fun stuff. Some of my new stuff didn't fit into here or hasn't fit safely just yet, so I'll get to that stuff later. So again, that's where I'm keeping my oil colors and my water colors. And these are brand new for my birthday too, a whole bunch of gouache. And I've never tried this before. I'll show this better off in a later video. I've never ever tried this type of paint before. <laughs> and so I wanted to just try absolutely everything. So I got a package that has 24 colors in it and I am super excited. So the next thing I'm going to be doing, and I don't know how I'm going to get this to fit in here, although I have an idea. What I want to carry is my brand new palettes. This is a Meaden Porcelain Rose palette for watercolors, or I guess whatever kind of paint you want, but it's labeled watercolor, and that's what I'm going to be using it for. And this is perfect for me because some of these tiny little areas, I like to paint in eensy-weensy little bits 
where I actually do need tiny, tiny little bits of paint like that with very finely pointed paint brushes. So I'm super excited about this and I finally got it, yay. My hope is that I'll be able to keep this in this drawer and I have an idea for that. I don't know if that's gonna work, but I have an idea and maybe I'll show that later. I also got this palette, which is a Japanese porcelain palette and it's obviously got so much more space around here in these portions in case I wanna do big washes of color or just make a big old mess. Whatever it is that I'm doing, maybe if I want to mix a tiny little bit of color in this area and then move it in and mix it with another color I've mixed over here or even a third one over there, I don't know what I'll be doing with it, but I'll be using all of these in whatever way I see fit. And I've always been needing some really good paint palettes and I've never had any really good paint palettes. This will do the job better because quite frankly, some of that didn't really do the job anyway. Now this is interesting to me. These I hadn't heard of. These are tempera paints, or however you pronounce it, I really don't know. I had never, <laughs> I had never heard of them coming inside of a cake before. So I came across these and I saw someone trying them. I've seen the big ones that you have in jars and containers for kids. Basically was able to find one image where somebody was using this brand and these paints in order to paint a picture, an adult, just using them for art. And I thought, this is the first time I've seen it. So I did a little research into it and the history of tempera paint and it wasn't invented for children. It was invented apparently, was it in France, in Europe for the purpose of artist use. So I thought to myself, this is brand new. Purple is gorgeous to me because I love all purples basically. And I'm just super curious to try again, brand new types of paint. So that's what I'm gonna be up to. <laughs> now this, I'm not gonna be storing in here. I've got another art box I'll be keeping this in. And for something else I will not be storing in here. So far as I know, I can't do this safely. So here's what's delightful to me. This right here is a ceramic sake set. And the reason why I got this for painting, and it might be obvious to a lot of folks, I find that when I'm painting with any kind of paint, but especially watercolors, I tend to need a lot of different vessels. First of all, I need one vessel for clean water for refilling everything. I hate to have to traipse about changing out the water all of the time. It really gets in my way. It interrupts the creative process. So I tend to need at least one container for washing off my brush that's going to get very filled with paint and can't really be used for anything else. Then I tend to need another container for specifically taking fresh water and using it to mix clean, fresh paints. And that has to be water that I have not used to dip my brush in. On top of that, depending upon how much I feel like going to empty that out, I always kind of wish I had a backup wash water cup so that I could go back and forth. For instance, if I mess up the first water and I just don't want to get more, or maybe I'm going back into that white paint, I want a second container of water for wicking the brush through just to get any remainders of paint off of. So there we go, I've got that. I'm a huge fan of having a backup so there's number four for a backup. And then of course, I find myself needing a container that is nice and safe, filled with fresh, clean water for refilling all of the aforementioned containers. So I was looking around trying to find the perfect painting set for using with watercolors. And I started thinking to myself at some point, guess what? I don't know how I got here, but I thought a little sake set will probably be absolutely perfect for everything I need. Unfortunately, this one didn't come with a cork stopper and I'm having a hard time finding a stopper that's going to fit it properly. If I could find one, I would probably just leave it sitting out filled with water so it's at the ready whenever I want to paint, but I guess I'll figure out a fix for that. Either I'll find a stopper or I'll just refill it freshly so I don't end up getting little dusty boo-boos inside of my paint brushes because my water has been dusted in by the atmosphere. That also will not fit safely into my new easel, so I'm keeping it off to the side in my art box. If I can slide this open real well, hold on, let's see how far I can get it. Okay, I got it. Now we focus on the drawer that came underneath there. So here's what I did. First, let me show you what I jerry-rigged. There's some excess space underneath these drawers and underneath this drawer in the back. 
and it's just nothing but shadow. So I knew I would end up with a situation where stuff would be rolling under there and I would hate myself for not fixing it. So I just took some empty jewelry box containers and flip them up like this so I can use them for storage if I want to, but I'm not there yet. And then I slide it right underneath that drawer. And because there's a screw back there, I'm using a shorter box on this side, but it hits that screw. And then I can leave these things here and they will not roll underneath there because I tried it just to see what it was gonna be like and it rolled just far enough under there that it was a nightmare. And I had to tip this thing up to try and get it back out. So that was weird and I'm not doing that again but I do like to test my theories. This one does not have a screw or it's a screw and a wing nut, I believe it is, like this underneath there. This side doesn't have that, so I used a bigger jewelry box lid, and again, nice and upturned in case I need to use it for storage, but I'm not there yet. And so on this side, I'm keeping the strap that came with this because I haven't needed to carry it on my shoulder yet. I might leave it in there or I might pop it out just so it looks a little nicer. Right in the middle, in case you hadn't thought of that, these are the legs. This is the middle leg that's going to extend down and support it when you're using it in its plain air cap capability instead of setting it up like a table easel. These tools I already had for using with paints have seldom if ever used them, but I think they came as a part of another kit and frankly, it just doesn't happen to be my thing to try to buy as many extra plastic tools as I can possibly get into my possession, so I probably wouldn't have gone for this particular set anyway. But I really don't recall anymore. Don't know how I got them, but I got them and they're staying there. This is another set. It's called paint erasers. Now, I haven't actually had to use these either because unfortunately, I'll put it this way, life happens. So years ago when I decided to get back into my artistic side and just be who I am, didn't really work out that way for very long so I didn't get a chance to use everything I bought. So these are still packaged up and ready and fresh and new for me. This is one of my pride and joy moments just because I love these big old huge brushes and in the course of my life, I've never really bought the huge brushes because you know, old stuff, life happened and I didn't feel good about these things even though they were important to me. So this is basically my one gigantor, fabulous, thick, serious, high quality brush that just feels great and works for me when I need it. Haven't used it that much either, unfortunately. Fortunately, that's all going to change. It's in the process of changing now. There is plenty of space for this here. There are a few extra inches even with this box underneath there. So I just leave it this way because when you pick the easel up, the handle is in this direction, so it'll slide down onto the base and be fine. I decided, once again, trying new stuff that I've never been able to try before, to try a liquid acrylic paint. Now, I've used acrylic craft paints and I thought, okay, well, what's the difference? Is there a similarity? Is, you know, can I use the one for the other? But I did my research into it and I found out that there's enough of a difference that this might be a completely different experience for me. And so once again, I want to try everything. So I got myself some of these. <laughs> you know, I got to fix that right. Put the colors in order at least once so it'll show up that way one time. <laughs> The white, I guess, can go anywhere, but it's too easily about to fall out of my hand, so I'm done with rearranging right now. So those fit here angled just about perfectly for me, and I could set them this way, but then I would just still have enough space for these six that are sitting here and still have to keep the extra one elsewhere. So I just like the angle because then at least that way they're kind of doing the Roy Biv thing that I want them to. So that is what this sucker looks like from the back, wide open. Where was I keeping these? I can't recall. <laughs> so this is that art box I'm talking about where I keep all the easement stuff. This 
is stuff I already had. Here's where that sake set sits. This is an aluminum watercolor palette that I bought and using it was a total sensory nightmare for me. So I consider this to be of high quality if you need a palette and you can stand the sensation of the brush rubbing against it. But when I used it, it tortured me like crazy. So for my money, it was probably the worst thing I could have bought. That's why I needed those new watercolor palettes because to me, I didn't even have one. I could not stand the sensation of using this one. This is an empty lunch tin. It just brings me joy. I used to have a bunch of colored pencils in here and then I realized I hate using colored pencils and they are a sensory nightmare for me like nothing I could ever explain. So I packaged them up and gave them to somebody who used them and liked them. And now this tin is empty. This is another tin. When my brother was a kid, he gave this to me because I was super into cars and he really didn't care about the tin that much so that's another one that's totally empty and more space for more art supplies then i've just got the package for the alcohol pearls that i've got in the easel i've got a bunch of oil pastels that i adore when i was a kid i was always like i love crayons i wish i had some crayons that were a little bit more sophisticated and as an adult i still missed that and desired it so guess what one day i remember that oil pastels exist and i guess they're a fairly new medium out there in the art community and i tried them and i love them and so now i love drawing with these and again i could never try the original type of pastels because i just gotta fly the autism flag high so i'm highly sensory sensitive and that is a sensory nightmare i refuse to even think about for one instance longer so these things for the time being will just be sitting in here like this There's a little shot of the drawer open from the front and this is where we'll be doing all of my new artsy fandango things with my sketching and my painting and everything else I can think of. Thank you for watching my 50th video on my vlog station. Just past the one year anniversary of my first vlog upload. I wish you special things for watching this special video with me. And now that you've seen everything, all of the 1990s wrap it up that's a wrap bye now <laughs> that's about it bye now <laughs>